Like if you want to make it even more pro, you, you bend down a bit. You like have a, like a slight curve. And that's why you see people like test that they do like the whole like bend down because like <laughs> it makes the abs strong. And I was ripped. I was like, holy shit, I did not know uh, I can have abs. All right, guys, so this is episode five on the flip side, Lucky Five. I'm very excited for this episode. We've been doing this for five weeks now, so it's been pretty crazy. Uh, what's your thoughts, Christian? It's been five freaking weeks. Yeah, dude, like when you put it that way, five weeks, like as opposed to five episodes, five yeah. weeks, five weeks of, you know, the whole process of getting it all sorted, recording, and then reading, um, listening it over, etc. It makes it sound a lot bigger treatment than, than five episodes. Yeah, dude, on a roll, on a roll. It's pretty crazy how fast five weeks went by, like sheer, like when we're talking about this on like driving to like Bombo, like that was like five weeks ago. That for me actually feels like a long a time ago, you. but it feels yeah, like, it also feels like yesterday. I have like yeah, a bit of like... You, would, yeah, for you it would feel like, like three months ago, eh? <laughs> Especially with everything that's going on, 100%. I mean, fuck. Five weeks ago it was what early August, late August, mid August. Mm. Jesus and Jesus, time flies, time flies. Now that you're working in the nine to five space, how does time fly for you? Like, well, what's your nine to five like? Is like each week a blur? What's your thoughts? I think because um, in my role I'm still obviously in the training phase of it, etc., and I'm slowly moving on towards becoming automated in the sense that away from training and just going about doing it properly yourself right so i think especially during the early phases of the job it kind of does seem to drag out day by day but i think mm -hmm. i mean with anything as soon as you get more productive and get more things to do you know it just gets a bit faster and you, as you get more responsibility especially so i think for me now it's slowly like i'm slowly getting used to it again in terms of okay monday wake up go and Tuesday go and then Friday is like it all like it just the amount of hype just builds up towards Friday and then Saturday and then I wake up on Sunday just pissed off on like, <laughs> work tomorrow oh god I absolutely hate it dude like, like last I think maybe two weeks ago I was going through a slump where the weeks felt so long like Friday came I woke up and I genuinely thought it was Friday oh shit it's just Thursday and like the weeks I've been like, it was just so slow because I was just waiting for the weekend. I was waiting for Friday night. I was waiting for Saturday night. And the week just felt like it went forever. Um, so I totally understand where, you, yeah. where you're getting there. Where just like your Wednesday feels like, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's just like, when is the weekend going to come? Yeah. <laughs> and then the weekend comes and then you're just like, oh. Did I even enjoy the weekend? Did I? Yeah. <laughs> did I like it? Did I have fun? It's just like, oh, dude. And then it just, oh, I don't know. Like, especially nine to five people. Like, I feel like if you have a weekend on like a, because obviously some people do work with their weekends being like a Wednesday and a Thursday as opposed mm -hmm. to you know Saturday and a Sunday. And it's like, mm -hmm. I wonder if they feel the same because the amounting, like the amounting stress when it comes to Friday. Like you know what, Friday night just feels. Like a Friday night, you know what I mean? Like I, don't, I can't see a Monday night feeling like a Friday night for some people. It's, it's quite funny to think about, but you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Dude, like, I feel like sometimes for some jobs, two days off isn't even enough to recover from like five days. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. I feel like that with most jobs. So, like, I reckon it's interesting. We talked about it the other week, where I think, especially with a lot of people working from home now and the transition coming um to a more like you know centralized working from home um for most companies i think there could be a four-day week eventually not anytime soon because it's just too normalized in mm -hmm. every industry nearly that five-day week working week is the way to go but four-day working week i think productivity would skyrocket if it was a four-day working week yeah and i think um People in like the north, the central coast, like North Australia, uh, North Sydney, they do four days a week. Like they just take off Friday and they just go like surfing and shit. Like stores are like not open on Friday. And it's just like the insane like culture. Like imagine the weekend you want to like stock up on food but everything's closed. Like that's yeah. a thing there, yeah. Dude, imagine that, that's just the North Shore life, you know, have, have yeah. two days weekend, one day for surfing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh god! Just imagine, just imagine that would that would actually be the life. But yeah, 
Dude, would... talking about like stores and stuff, what's your thoughts on the Travis Scott McDonald's meal? I want it here. <laughs> I don't, like, I know it's probably just the same trash, but I want it here. <laughs> I want to try the Travis Scott burger. Look, see, the ingredients. Thank you, Stephen. The ingredients. Thick cut apple wood smoked bacon. Shut the hell up, McDonald's. You know exactly that you're, you know very well that you're using the same bacon. You're using everything the same. It's not thick cut. This is a quarter smoked. pound, I. Yeah. Quarter pound with bacon, man. But I want it. <laughs> Dude, it's become like such a meme where I hear people saying, Dude, apparently there's Travis Scott's hair in it. <laughs> it's like became this massive meme that just blew everything up. Travis Scott got blown up, McDonald's got a bunch of free marketing, like insane shit. Bro, that's honestly gotta be A, the top 10 most unexpected collaboration of 2020. Yeah. And B, like, how smart. That's the smartest piece of marketing and promotional activity and just anything like oh it's so smart of travis as well like especially for maccas maccas like even if they decline even if they were in a state of decline or which i doubt like just getting the brand and image and name of travis scott bang like did you see people like yeah like the memes were coming out and people going up to like the drive through like <laughs> can i please get one travi patty <laughs> <laughs> and like there's those memes where like they just roll up and the, and the service girl's like what do you guys want and then they play the song, yeah. the Sycamore yeah. song. You know what <laughs> we want. And like, <laughs> it's become a TikTok. Oh, dude, it's so Insane. funny. It's like, crazy how like TikTok is like now where memes are created. TikTok yeah, is a and meme I, generator. Huh. 100%. And like Maccas would have 100% known that it would blow up on TikTok. Like people would just film it. Like they obviously don't care if they receive any sort of negative publicity from this either. Like I bet you like, People could have just got like a, a bun, a simple patty with ketchup, and nothing else that's meant to be in the Travi patty. I'm gonna keep calling it the Travi patty. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. Whatever else is in the Travi patty, they might not get it, but they don't care. And they might, like, people might abuse Maccas on TikTok, etc. But Maccas don't care. People are Dude. still gonna line up for the Travi patty. They could oh, legit oh, serve a quarter patty. pounder, and like no one would know. They just serve exactly. a normal quarter pound. No one would know. And the thing is, people would still go. Like after we're just having be like, oh my god, dude, that was so amazing! Like you gotta try <laughs> it, the Travi Patty. Like the Travi Patty is insane. You gotta try it. Like that, it's so smart. Oh my god! Like uh, yeah, look at Travis Scott. Look how smug he is. He's like, yep, <laughs> I've made a good amount of money from a stupid bloody quarter pounder. Do um, you reckon it would work here? I don't, because I think America has such a huge rap culture. Yeah. Like I've noticed that, like when a song comes out, like say. Gone Bad by Drake and Meat Mill. It gets like mm-hmm. 100 mils, 100 yeah. million views. And like majority of that, like at least 80%, 80 million comes from the United States. Mm. Yeah, like it's 100%. insane. Like they got a huge rap culture. That was like, that we sort of are slowly building up. Like as our sort of, as social media becomes more like omnipresent and as like our generation mm. goes up, people are going to like listen to more and more trap. But like um, America, like, yeah, that's sort of where it's at, I guess. Like, obviously the rap culture was, I mean, you could say it was essentially cultivated in America, right? You had yeah. your, you know, your rap greats and it's it's slowly evolved through time. And like, obviously Travis Scott is a very good example of how hip hop has evolved with time. But like, I feel like here it wouldn't make as big of a statement. Like you're right, I 100% don't think it would make as big of a statement or an impact as it has here because it's a massive cultural impact there as well, right? Like rap like rap stars are considered like heroes and like really yeah. revered highly by the people like Kanye West going for president I don't care what anyone says if you vote Kanye West as the president you're an absolute <laughs> idiot like that's just the dumbest thing anyone could do but what I'm saying is like that's the influence and power that they can hold like but that's they can they have the power to change and shift people's beliefs and understandings and the way they think etc and I don't think they realize it either. They just, they're just that. Dude, uh, on the topic of just like shifting how people think and like how like if we were ser- to serve a quarter pounder, um, people would not, wouldn't even know. There was like this story, this guy named, I forgot his name, but he's like this um, producer. He makes mm-hmm. movies and he's also like, he has like a label and he helps like artists. And I think he was like touring with like 
some big band like either ACDC, Metallica, or it was like this sort of like rock band. And the rock band was like, dude, like the speakers aren't loud enough. We want more sound. And like the speakers were already massive and like there was not much Jerry, that was his name, Jerry could do to like, he couldn't get more speakers and it's like expensive and shit. So yeah. what he did was he just got a bunch of these massive boxes. His name mm. is Jerry Weintraub. Um, got a bunch of boxes and just spray paint them black and put them all over the venue, like on the sides, on, on the front of the venue. And the, so the band came and they're like, damn, like what are all these black boxes? And Jerry was like, these are the speakers you're asking for. And they rocked it that night. And that end of the night, he was like, so how did it sound? And they're like, it sound amazing. <laughs> It just goes to show, eh, like, if you, like, it's just the influence, eh, like, you can change people's thoughts and, like, if you believe, I don't know, I don't, th- I don't think <laughs> I could do that. We, like, I couldn't do that. I don't, I don't know who could do that. <laughs> that's so, that's, okay, that's essentially like Kanye West running for president in a nutshell. <laughs> like, he just rocks up out of nowhere, runs for president, and then everyone's like, oh, you know, how'd you do? And he goes, yeah. Everyone will just tell him what he wants to hear. You know what I mean? Like, it's like one of those things. They don't really, they won't really care much about it. But going back on the topic, I really want to see a, um, I want to see a 1-4 and KFC collaboration. Um, make it happen, guys. I'd buy, the, I'd buy that burger. I'd buy a 1-4 supercharged. <laughs> so when's the last time you've eaten KFC? For me, it's, oh, been, it's a been, been a long time. Yeah, it's feel like it's been a KFC long is like time. slowly dying out or something. It's been a long time. Like, I'm craving it a bit now since I'm talking about it, but maybe it's just like Korean fried chicken and all these other better chicken stores have just taken over. Where like I prefer to go to like a Korean chicken spot and just like have Korean chicken, fried chicken. Um, but yeah, yeah, I haven't eaten I, I KFC in a long time. I don't think it's gonna die. I don't. I don't know if it. I don't it won't die out for sure. Down, but it's more. Yeah, I think it's more so that we've just been. I don't, I, like I personally haven't oh yeah wow it's actually I miss KFC man <laughs> I want KFC talking about dying down <laughs> is like Supreme still a thing is like Yeezy's still a thing is like Palace and Vape oh, still a thing I mean I should be asking you 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 had you had quite the collection eh? you had you had a few pieces here and there I think as like especially me like I was obviously I wasn't obsessed with it but it was like obviously one point it was like oh my god supreme oh my god palace oh my god this and then like you're slowly you like you you come so consumed in it but i think the hype has slowly died down obviously the hype piece culture is still very much intact but i think like anti-social social club for example that brand blew the f- up in like what 2016 and then they like they had a lot of issues with their processing and the orders and they took like three months of delay yeah. to get the to get the shipping out mm-hmm. just makes you wonder like that's literally just a plain hoodie with just some random slogan who, it's like shitty who hoodie thought, as well it's like a gilded yeah, hoodie and who thought of anti-social social club and then just suddenly blew up like how does this happen how do streetwear brands make their mark well, that's like, true there's got to be something true. on it you know what i mean like off-white all respect to virgil i do think he's got some creative genius behind him even though i don't particularly like majority of his louis vuitton pieces but what he's done to cultivate off-white and essentially create it to be like the... It is essentially... When you think of streetwear and hypebeast wear, you think of off-white. That's like essentially... For some reason, when I see someone wear like this massive black like off-white hoodie that's like oversized and they have like the massive off-white symbol in the back, for some reason, the first thing I think of is like Levi from like Attack on Titan. I don't know oh, why. Dude. I don't know why I have that I, weird connection. No. Hundred percent. You know why? It's because the um the emblem for the yeah for, the emblem is sort of similar and like Levi has like he likes wearing things oversized and sheer. He has like yeah, I think it's the emblem is very simple and he has that weird like messy like rose like symbol that one of the yeah. Attack on Titan um sections have. Do you know what <laughs> they call it? They call it the Scouts. I think they're the Scouts. Scouts. Yeah. 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 So Scouts Levi emblem. is that is is the leader of. Yeah, the scouts. Yeah, see the emblem there. So that emblem. Yeah, I know what you mean. Hundred percent. Oh, dude, how sick would it? Be? How funny would it be if like the next season of Attack on Titan, you just see Levi rock up with like a massive off white hoodie. <laughs> yeah. Skins. What a go to your anime though. If anyone doesn't watch it, go home and watch it. That is, it is 
freaking insane. It is ridiculous anime. I think it's actually an anime that even if you don't watch anime, you can watch it and you'll enjoy it. Because it went straight into IMDb's like top 100. I don't know. No, it definitely got really, really high ratings. Yeah, Attack and like it, it really blew up. Cool. Like, yeah, back on the topic of. Oh, it is quality. Levi is Levi is actually goat. He's actually. Oh, now I want that hoodie. Am I? Am I looking to cop that hoodie? <laughs> Yeah, walk around as if it's like an off-white hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that actually looks sick. Yeah, that looks sick. I wouldn't mind. But um, anyway, yeah, back on the topic <laughs> of off-white, like, what Virgil was able to do was he created, like, I'd, I'd, go, I'd go so far as to say he created, like, a lifestyle with off-white. Like, it just changed it so much. It just, it became one of the biggest brands in the world. And, like, it's literally, like, like it, it's not an extravagant piece. It's yeah, just... and on the topic of like why pieces pop off, I think it's like when Kanye wears an anti-social social club hoodie, that's when it pops off. Yeah. And like, um, dude, off white it's expensive. It's like six hundred bucks for a hoodie. Yeah. Jesus. It, it's hundred percent not worth it. There's yeah. definitely like, it's definitely using the same materials etc as many of your other favorite brands or anything it's all made from the same factories etc but you're like the way he succeeded is obviously marketing the logo the brand and his branding as well his personal image as on it as well and it does help because i think virgil and kanye are friends or they aren't but it's more so that with the like we said earlier with the rap culture being so solidified in america people just willing to catch on to what they're doing and and you know with the clothes that they wear and the things that they do and the things they listen to they'll, they'll easily doesn't, doesn't matter if it's 700 dollars or 1.2k they'll, they'll buy it because of kanye worry you know what i mean and that goes two ways because there's a lot of things that kanye does and says that it's just completely stupid and people should not repeat or do but that's how that's how they win that's how they win that's how they get our money do you know like clothing brands literally just like bombard like Addison Ray, um, Dixie, um, Charlie, just with clothing in the mm. hopes that they wear it on one of the Imagine, TikToks. They just like bombard like, them. The, okay, A, the amount of free clothes that yeah. they get. They got like probably free a store full stuff, of clothes. Just free stuff in general. Yeah, yeah dude. Like, and then imagine that they wear one of those hoodies, jumpers, whatever, in one of the Instagram posts. All the comments, even if they just say hoodies from at this place, mm -hmm. bro, that place is easily made over 100k just like that. Yeah. Easily. 100%. And just like the photo they get from that to put onto their Instagram or website, that itself is worth like a 20,000 Instagram sponsored post. But they got it for free through just sheer luck. That's so. Yeah. And it's so mental to think that these people were just normal people before they started dancing in front of a camera on this Chinese app called TikTok. And then overnight they became famous and huge. And like, it's so smart for companies to be able to target these people where they know that the following is there, the audience is there, people will see those clothes. Millions of people will see those clothes, millions of views, millions of hits, and bang, it's an easy, surefire sale. That's why social media influencers are making the money that they are. Like, obviously, they, no one that's a social media influencer deserves the amount of money they make, but it makes sense. From a business standpoint, it makes so much sense for you to invest in Addison Ray, Charlie D'Amelio, uh, whoever the hell else, as opposed to uh, an old Hollywood star that was a hit, like, five years ago but it hasn't been as big yet because it's what's happening now dude like one of those like three girls have just so much power like if you have like 70 million followers dude you're bigger than any news station one post you get more views than like anything like you have like crazy power yeah. it's like you you control like masses at a time it's crazy <laughs> It's like with great power become, comes with great exactly. responsibility. Because these guys, it's like the same as Kanye. Whatever, if whatever they say in front of their camera, they're like, "Hey guys, I endorse this," or like, "I don't endorse this," or "I think this of this situation." Mm -hmm. People be like, "Okay, yeah, sweet, I believe it. If they say it, I'll, I'll believe it." And then it goes, "Okay, dude, imagine one of your, actually, you have, you have one close influencer friend, right?" Okay. Now. Just imagine, like, a, you, your friends with, like, a uh, an A-list, a TikToker, right? Like a Charlie D'Amelio, etc. 
you two could just conspire to start a business. Yeah. Well, obviously, that's literally what they're all doing. They all start a business and just makes bank. But, like, that's yeah. so smart. Like, just team up with your smart influencer friend, make a business, put it up, bang, bro. So, done. Like, these influencers, like, Addison Ray made her, like, makeup brand insane. Like, I'm pretty sure it's, like, killing. Oh, dude, do you follow Nelk Boys, right? I've heard of them, yeah. I saw that they had a video with 6ix9ine. Dude, they do 50 million a year in sales, in merch sales. Insane. Logan Paul at his peak did like 20 million at least. Million? Yeah. So imagine like a Charlie or like an Ad- Addison Ray. They probably like do shit. Like they oh, could probably like command they a lot. Triple, yeah, they would triple that. Yeah. Oh, but that's true because they're, they're absolutely... They're one of those crazy YouTubers, right? So, like, they rely on the merch sales to be able to push them through. And, like, Logan Paul as well. I think he's rebranded his Maverick clothing line to become more of a lifestyle brand as opposed Mm -hmm. to merch. So, that shift in rebranding has brought upon a new new form of audience and new new interested interested minds to it as well. So, it's, it's quite interesting, eh? Like, how they just use merch as their means to get money i think mr beast does the same thing but mr beast is sick shout out mr beast he's he's sick i heard this interview from it was like a podcast with casey neistat and casey was like dude mr beast is so dude you know he's like 21 22 insane he looks like this old like person but he's super young but he's just (laughs) giant dude he has like that tony robbins sort of like like head shape and like structure he looks like a tony robbins um but um apparently like Casey was like, dude, he's so smart. Like we had a meeting together or we just caught up and Mr. Beast asked me like, how do I go ahead and articulate myself better? How do I make people understand me more? And that just shows how self-aware Mr. Beast is and his hunger to improve and get better. Like insane. Especially because you can just tell, I mean, if you watch one of his videos, you can just tell that he's not one of those YouTubers that are just there to like grab your attention for 10 minutes and piss off and like and just essentially use you for your money Like he's there always trying to innovate and like try to create cool content good content And he's always like, trying to give value and, Like give back to the community or just like really create yeah, pure like you've seen with the the tree video he planted like ridiculous trees And have you yeah, seen the app game like, that he created? No, I haven't seen that. Actually. Dude, he created this app where you have to like hold like your finger on like the phone and like the dot moves and you just have to keep following mm. it. And the moment you let go, you lose. And apparently like people just played the game for like over like 48 hours. <laughs> it's so stupid. But like nowadays, like we said last week, nowadays all you need is something like, in, like to say, content for example nowadays all you need is something that's short snappy can grab your attention for the next five minutes or like even 30 seconds and that can hold your attention for the next for the next couple of minutes and that's an instant hit something so stupid like that dude and on that topic youtube is taking over short videos i'm excited i want to pump out our highlights to see how those go those will be perfect for like youtube short videos vertical videos right oh yeah, I think they also sometimes like I, I've, I've luckily got chosen where you could watch short videos and it'll be just like a normal video and there'll be black bars on top and bottom, but it'll be like a story of like a normal video. So like normal videos sometimes. Still Wait, what did you, what did you say? Bef- what did you say before YouTube were rolling out what? So YouTube were like testing random people to get like these sort of short video, uh, and like I was luckily one of the few that got chosen. Uh-huh. And I gave it a try and it was like a bunch of these short like cat videos and shit and obviously since YouTube people don't upload horizontal videos a mm. lot of the videos were just like normal sort of normal horizontal videos but like yeah. in like story form I think they have like YouTube introduced like stories yeah if I'm yeah, yeah they did but it didn't hit on but I think it. this new form oh really what? the story so, so I would put a story telling people to subscribe and it would get like yeah. seven to 800 views per week, which is pretty crazy. Um, the, just the one story. Um, so like it's, yeah, Dude, that's, like people consume that's it strangely, yeah. That's insane. What? 
I didn't even know that. I thought it was just going poo poo, but it seems like it's doing well. I <laughs> think they managed to hit that off as well. This will also blow up. Yeah. I think if they introduce the short form content vertically on YouTube, it'll 100% be a hit, especially because like it's YouTube. You know, you follow your YouTubers and everything. And if they manage to knock down that um, algorithm, well, they have a great algorithm, but like I think it'll work on par with how well Instagram's working because like it's the YouTubers but yeah it'll be an interesting couple of interesting couple of months coming up ahead and seeing what where YouTube goes with that and unlike TikTok and Instagram reels where they just started from scratch mm. YouTube is using its existing content and yes. out of all these platforms it has the most content as well it has the most data that's going to be like scary shit I think you know what people could also do is they could just re-upload certain videos in a vertical yeah. format yeah and people would still watch it mm-hmm. even though because it's just easy it's just convenient as opposed to them having to select find the video and select it if the video pops up as a vertical one you don't have to do anything you just keep your phone like that and you'll get people will still watch it even if they've already seen it and like you could obviously edit the video in a way that could be viewed vertically and then to make it a more pleasant viewing experience for the viewers and then you know you keep that content in a different format and it's almost like convincing the 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 viewers that they're watching a new video because they feel like it's different yeah so it's all like "Ah, youtube is smart where like sometimes you know how there's like the already watch there's that red bar below the video showing that you've watched that whole video Mm. i think after like seven eight nine months those disappear so it gets it to re-watch videos you've already watched because it removes it I'm not going to lie, I've been guilty of that. I've rewatched a lot of videos that I've already watched, but because I think that I haven't, that I haven't yeah, seen Yeah, exactly. Before, Same. Right? I think they've taken off, because like, yeah, you, yeah. you know if you watch it, so they've definitely done that, yeah. Very sneaky. How's the content detox been going? Or like, have you been, or any challenges this week? Yeah, so a bit of context for listeners, viewers. Um, this week, Andy and I tried to set up a... A challenge for ourselves where we gave ourselves the start of last i think when did we message each other about this it would have been like the start of i, I think, think it was, was like last tuesday yeah wednesday? it would have been it would have been just after we recorded so today we were, it's the 21st of september so it would have been last week where we told ourselves okay look we're just going to detox from something so andy was detoxing from content completely he was choosing youtube as the content that he was going to detox from and i said okay yeah sweet nice see i'll join you i'll cold turkey or something as well now first of all how did your week go how did because okay andy like completely removed youtube from his phone he went like whilst i spoke to him was like two days in where he'd done it and i was like dude what you've deleted youtube from your phone you animal what is wrong with you so how did that go so like um i tried to detox and like for some reason that night i sent christian like this like and like i was like yo i'm gonna go on a detox yeah. after that yo check out all the comments on this youtube video and i'm like that's so ironic i just told him on detox and here i'm sending him a youtube video so like this sucks i can't like control myself so I, then i was like Fuck this i'm gonna delete the app now the only thing that stopped me from deleting the app is every day when you do like a three minute plank with like a 15 kilo vest like the only thing that can keep you going is if you get distracted. And what I watch is I watch anime music videos, AMVs, while I'm like working out. It keeps me like, I, I, I can push through the whole three minute plank. And like, I deleted the app. So for like two days, I did the planks just like watching nothing. I was just like, like just holding it and, it's, and just look at the clock so hard. And I just hate doing planks. So I was like, I'm gonna reinstall YouTube just for the morning workouts. And that it's worked for like a day. Spring, that worked for like one or two days. And then today, I'm back to watching content, breakfast, oh. and lunch. So I broke it! No. Wait, but the thing is, you can't just, like, when you're doing these sort of challenges and detoxes, whatever, you can't just expect to, like, get rid of it immediately and then it to have immediate impact. Like, you gotta. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say slowly ease into it either. Like you've got to understand that you will always have those temptations to jump back into old habits or old things that you used to be doing and it's slowly sort of be, 
overcoming that mental barrier where you can be like, okay, nah, sweet. Ah, oh, shit, I'm gonna like get off it. I gotta delete it. I gotta <laughs> keep going. And then once you yeah. slowly get into it, you'll eventually stop reaching for YouTube on your phone and you'll be like, ah, oh, mm-hmm. okay, sweet. And then you've mastered it. But yeah, dude, I don't know how you can do three minute planks without like just in general. What the hell, dude? It's three insane. minutes must be like. 300 hours, I don't know how it, <laughs> what is wrong with dude, you? It's painful, and you just and stare then... at the clock as well. <laughs> what I now do is, I learned this from somewhere, where like, when the timer goes off, I hold it for another like, three seconds, like, to push it above the timer. And I think like, usually people will like, they just wait until it goes off and they, they collapse. But if you mm. force yourself to hold for another two to three seconds, that's sort of when the gains come in. So that's what I've been doing. I think it's just like sheer practice. Like I'm pretty sure I started at like 40 seconds and just like kept on increasing it. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it goes without saying with anything. Once you slowly keep practicing something and just keep constantly doing it, you'll eventually get better at it. But no, that's good to hear. As if, Dude, as in you'll be able to do that. I've been doing planks for like the last like two years, and like I don't know. I'm pretty. Fair. I don't have a fat belly, but I never was able to get abs. I was like, you know, I went through that phase when I was young. I was like, dude, I want abs. I want to be ripped. And then I just accepted maybe my body type isn't like that. And I don't, yeah. really, I don't really care about abs. Like, I'm, I'm fit. That's fine. And then, I don't know. I was just like, shirtless. I was just like in the bathroom or some shit. And then, like, yeah, I don't know. I was bending down or some shit. Or, like, I was trying to pick something up. And I looked at the girl like, what the f***? I have abs. And I think I was just like in some weird structure where, like, I was like sucking my belly in. But tensing at the same time. And I was like ripped. I was like, holy shit, that's how people yeah. show off their abs. Like when you like stand still and you just tense, that's just like, you're just tensing. But like how you really get your abs to show is you tense and you suck in your belly at the same time. So the fat gets sucked into it and the abs start showing. And then if you want to like, if you want to make it even more pro, you, you bend down a bit. You like have a, like a slight curve. And that's why you see people like tense, that they do like the whole like bend down because like it makes the abs show. And I was ripped. I was like, holy shit, I did not know uh, I can have abs. Um, but yeah, that was interesting. Thing. How have we got into this point? <laughs> about? Let's take it back. How was your week? Um, yeah, dude, my week was pretty chill. I think what I need to get used to is like getting home and getting into a routine which I haven't been able to do this week, so I'm going to be starting this week. So you will hear an update next week. Dude, the afternoon what routine doing. is the toughest routine. Like my morning routine, yeah. that's pretty strong, but to get a night routine concert, so tough. Oh. Because by the end of the day, your mental will is just like to the ground and you can't will yourself at all to do anything. Like end routines are so tough. I think that goes with anyone, no matter what sort of field or position they're in. Morning routines are just, they're just so standard because you just wake up and you know what you need to do need to either get out of bed go go to work or go do this and that and then like it's just set you know what i mean you just have set things that you follow and do to get started with your day whereas end routine is probably just important as a start oh who am i kidding no it's not just as important but it's like still important in terms of winding down and being able to still be productive if you need to be otherwise just do nothing but yeah i think that's one thing i need to do like develop an an evening routine where i'm not just going straight home and just going straight to bed like the lazy shithead i am but um That's yeah shit, i need to find something sleep. to cold turkey from as well where do you think i should try and cold turkey from i need to find something to cold turkey from i think instagram Ooh. i think i need cold turkey from instagram i honestly nice. think so no, I, I wouldn't go so far as to delete it but <laughs> put it on a timer yeah, is there like I a, have a time yeah there's blocks every 15 have, minutes um, if I spend more than 15 minutes on TikTok or Instagram, my phone, like, it's like ran out of time, but obviously I kept ignoring it throughout the day. You could like ignore it. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I, I thought about that because prior to, um, I think during lockdown, I was hitting like bad number of hours <laughs> per day on an Instagram. Like, I don't, I don't know, maybe popular people don't feel this, but like when you're just sitting in the bus and like or anywhere else and you just need to look busy and you're just like pretending like you're texting someone i'm just on my phone on instagram like i'm not busy as hell or anything but it's been bad my instagram ranges fluctuates from three hours a day to one point five yeah so it's 
At the moment, it's averaging 1.5, but I think I'm going to call Tokyo oh, Vincent. Oh, that's not too bad. So, I, I, know, I know two of my friends also called Turkey from Instagram as well because it's just it's just bad like it's just not good especially on anyone's mental when they're always comparing themselves or looking at things and other things that they see it's just it's just not good I don't like Instagram damn oh shit oh I see I'm, I'm like similar I'm like an hour oh shit that was like two hour one hour yeah I spent like roughly an hour on Instagram a day to um, yeah you don't even realize it either. It's just one of yeah. those things where it just, it just happens. Well, like moving on, I do have one thing that I want to just quickly discuss. I'll bring it up on my PC as well, so I get the. Um, Do why you bring it up? Did you get braces? Your teeth are so straight and white, Christian. <laughs> I, I did get braces. It nice. was a rough couple of years of my life because I had <laughs> plates and then I had braces. So my jaw oh, was shit. like, my teeth were like that. So okay. I have to get my teeth like this, and then oh, I have to get them like flat. Oh, so like, shit. yeah, do you still, it, it, do you still it was wear retainers. Nah, I did for the first two years, and then just stopped after. Now, if I put it on, it'll kill. It will. It will hurt so bad. So isn't it gonna get like over time? Aren't your teeth gonna like get fucked up? Like go back to bad? It's potentially, but it's one of those things where like, I don't think it would, because. It, it uh, that would only happen if you if it gets really like it could just it could get really bad you're right but i shut up bro come on <laughs> 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 I'm not gonna get back to this. Okay. um yeah so earlier this week um we've actually had some pretty interesting things come out of our two of our big four banks in australia oh, we've sure. had nab and cba introduce the no interest credit card. Oh shit! Sure. Okay, we'll get, we'll, we'll get a but I'm just, thank you, right now. Um Interesting. Yeah. So Nab. So I heard from someone um, who works at CBA that CBA and Nab both had planned to do this, right? And CBA were going to introduce it later in the year in december and introduce the whole thing at once so introduce it and release it at the same time so that it's available to consumers at the same time that they introduce it but what happened is nab introduced it earlier and so nab introduced it like last week and when nab introduced it cba were like oh shit <laughs> gotta get onto it right away and they introduced it like the same day or the day after right but dude how did you ever think we'd live in a time where we saw a big four bank release a interest-free credit card to consumers and you know exactly why they've released this credit card right like you can take a guess and you'll you'll know exactly why they've released um, maybe an interest like, credit card. it makes people transfer to commonwealth bank and then once people use commonwealth bank they'll most likely get a home loan with commonwealth bank and it's like a good way to hook people in Is yeah that that's definitely definitely one reason it's, okay i mean with any with any product offering a bank office it's obviously um an incentive for them to attract customers to you know put their equity into the bank and for the bank to be able to grow as a business as they are they need funds and equity to be able to go and do whatever they want with the funds right but it's to combat people's over reliance well i wouldn't say over reliance it's to combat uh, a market that afterpay has recently just came in crashing in unannounced to the party they're, they're literally introducing this to target millennials with the way that the millennials use their money and being able to offer this product as a tailored offering to the younger generations and millennials is such a smart idea what's the criteria to get this i'm looking at nabs now i know steven has cbas open but there's different so from my knowledge is that there's different credit limits that you can apply for so mm -hmm. um you can apply for like a five hundred dollar one thousand three thousand or five thousand so you could buy if that I'm... much you could like spend that much money and just not pay it off ever you do pay so the way it works is that there's just a monthly fee so they just charge oh, customers yeah. monthly fee but zero interest now what i'm interested in is huh. what happens when customers default essentially not able to pay themselves back right so okay so nab have a one thousand two thousand and three thousand dollar credit limit with okay. the monthly fee uh, like 
different accordingly. So $1,000 credit limit, obviously the lowest monthly fee, $10 monthly fee. Ah, there's a monthly fee to this credit card. Interesting. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So you just have Let's to make... calculate the interest rate. So if it's like you're paying, say, $12 on a $1,000, on a $500 credit limit, that's a 2.4% per month. Pretty Based smart. On credit limit. Based on the Pretty credit smart, limit. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, and then it's essentially like you have a month, a minimum monthly payment. So it's $35 for now, right? So $35 mm. per month you have to do. Now, what I want to know is what happens if you can't meet that $35 minimum monthly payment based on the amount that you've. There must spent. be like fees. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's so, got to be fees. Yeah. Obviously, oh, yeah, 100% there's fees, but like, I think those fees would be quite substantial given that it's an interest-free credit card you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it's interesting though like it's interesting to see that the banks literally saw the threat that afterpay had mm -hmm. on their market as well and be like hey look to make it because it is a lot easier if you bank with nab or cba already and you want to buy now pay later service mm -hmm. just use you know use your funds that you already have within cba instead of going to afterpay and logging yeah. in and getting this funds to afterpay etc it's it's very smart and interesting and it's going to change the way a lot of people bank especially millennials so i think it's i think it's very interesting see what happens Dude. as well i think and it's also going to get people to spend more and sooner like stimulate the economy so like i'm pretty mm -hmm. excited to see how it goes i think that's a very big one as well because i think a lot of people will just be immediately just attracted to the interest free and they're like oh sweet and then they'll just spend more they'll spend more unknowingly and it, it will it will have an impact on the economy with a um, however big or small it will be, but yeah, it's very interesting. I think you can get you improved know, in like, 60 seconds. What really surprised me was like in America, they have a huge credit culture, credit cards, everything. Whereas mm -hmm. in Australia, we've been raised really well where we're scared of credit cards and we just use our debit cards. So I'm pretty happy with how like Australians have been able to like have a pretty strong foundation when it comes to teaching people because it's insane. People in America, they have credit cards and I, I thought you get a credit card, you spend two grand, and that month you just pay off the two grand. No, in America, everyone's paying the mi minimum monthly sort of payments. Insane. Isn't that just like crazy and weird to think? Because like, I know here, especially a lot of people I know, like not many people I know have a credit card. And if they do, it's because they want to be able to manage their monthly finances, etc. with the with them receiving a monthly paycheck right if you receive a monthly paycheck obviously you need to budget yourself accordingly because sometimes you obviously will have expenses that you need to meet in the short term that you can't essentially aff afford if you didn't have a credit card right but yeah i think i feel like especially in america it's all about the culture all about like oh i got a platinum credit card or i got this or i got that you know what i mean it's like more so like dude status is insane like you get the top yeah. line this like metal card i want a metal card that would be cool. Dude, I want, apparently there's these things called like, um, it's like personal banker card, where like you have like at least like 25 mil or 10 mil in your bank account, and you have this personal banker card, which is like a completely different looking card, and there's literally this number on it where you could call them, and they'll do anything you say. Like you call them, uh -huh. like, hey, my kid needs a birthday gift, can you go and get this limited edition thing for him? And they'll go ahead and get that done for you. Insane. Jeez. That's like something out of the movies, eh? Like, yeah. it makes sense, yeah. though, because obviously the banks do want to tailor to their most valued customers, given that if they were to lose that customer, they'd literally lose so much in liquidity just straight, just from one person. Yeah. That's, wow, that's like having your own butler, eh? Like, yeah, your car, it is. It it is. is. Like, go clean my car. Oh, okay. They clean your car for you. It's insane. They come pick it up, they get it clean, they deliver it. Dude, I might so get a personal... what's the difference? <laughs> what's the difference between a personal banker and just like your personal assistant? There's no yeah, difference. No there. difference. But one is free. <laughs> one is part of the bank's program. One's part of the bank's offerings as a service. Wow, well, you never th never thought I'd hear about a bank offering a personal assistant to you. Right, I mean, if I was worth... let's do the numbers. Let's say you have to have at least twenty five million dollars. Let's bring it down to like ten million dollars in your bank account. Now the bank is probably able to make, how many percent do you think they, they can return on that if they were to reinvest that money? Um, so 4% of 10 million, that's 
$400,000 per year. That's like, no wonder they can give you a free personal assistant. Yeah, shit, okay, how do you put it that way? Wow, it's in the bank's best interest to be able to offer them a personal assistant, eh? Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, that's, that, that's, that, I, want, I want $10 million now. I want I want $10 million just to have a personal banking assistant or yeah. personal banker. Jeez, that would be the absolute life. Or you could just like like have like $1 million or like two, 300K and just like hire someone for like 50K a year. <laughs> 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 just, uh... <laughs> Oh, I had fun with this episode, Christian. So thanks for All doing right. this. Thank you so much for episode five. We'll cut it short here. Um, yeah, let us know any feedback, etc. Appreciate it so much, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Today was more of just a casual chat. Um, let's see what we have in store next week. Thank you so much yeah. for listening, guys. Thank you so much, everyone. Hope you guys had fun. Peace.